Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere archim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for beer, and the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, like foreigners scattered among the heathen, that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled, The New Testament is Against You Christians. And I wanted to get this first precept in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And the subheading says, A living hope and a sure salvation. And it reads, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High Yahweh, the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the Most High Power Yahweh and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection Salakia, by the resurrection of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach from the dead. Now, right here, why would the Apostle Peter, if these were a uh, heathen, all right, because the Christian church has this misconception, this preconceived notion that uh, the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father was um, crucified to save the entire world. And a while back, we even had this, um, this off-ass Jake girl talking about how um, to stop listening to Hebrew Israelites because we uh, are insinuating that the Lord's blood wasn't powerful enough to purify all nations or save all nations. First and foremost, our Lord is not limited. All right. Second, what we're saying is his blood wasn't shed for any dirty ass heathen. That's just the straight skinny from the scriptures. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Bible. So the point of this is our Lord, he said what he came to do. He was very clear. He was very straightforward. And they, even the report about our Lord from other uh, Israelites on the scene was an Israelite Salakia. I'm getting this precepts mixed up, but I'll put it like this. Our Lord Yahweh Shai had no guile in his mouth, meaning he had no lies. He wasn't speaking any false prophecies, anything of the sort. Okay. He said who he came to save, and that was the nation of Israel. Okay. Now, third, our Lord, as well as his um, disciples who later became apostles, all of them had the same report about our Lord, and including the prophets that, came, that were before our Lord in the flesh on the scene, such as Isaiah, and the list goes on and on. Okay? So, this right here is in the New Testament, which the Christians like to commandeer, but they, don't, they haven't been blessed with the Holy Spirit. So, why would the Apostle Peter be talking about... Um, you know, because the blue letter will sometimes try to tell you that, this, oh, yeah, the uh, scattering was a uh, Christian scattered throughout. What what sense would it make for Christians to be scattered and who scattered them? For what purpose? Like, OK, if they were all, quote unquote, Christians, why did the scattering happen? Oh, no, you Christians got to break up. You Christians of all nations. I'm going to scatter you into all nations. Like what? No, this is talking about Israelites that were scattered into all nations pursuant to the curses written in the book of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter starting at the 15th verse all right that's what that's referring to as well as leviticus the 26th chapter now that word christian was implanted but it's really talking about mashiachim disciples of the anointed one all right that's what our people were those of our people that believed on our lord yahweh Shah, this was referring to them those who didn't believe it wasn't referring to them all right but ultimately all of the all of the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and speckled bird, are saints, meaning sanctified unto the Heavenly Father. Which is why the beloved Apostle Peter, he is starting off his epistle by saying what he's saying. This is why he said in verse two, "Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High Power, Yahweh the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, and unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied." That's the reason why the beloved Apostle Peter said that. Okay. Verse four, 
to an in so like it to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of the most high Yahweh Bashmi al Shah through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And when is that last time? It's talking about the last days, all right? When um the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi al Shah, he sent his only begotten son Yahweh Shah back to destroy Babylon the Great, the US of A, the final place of captivity for the Israelites. And he beams up the elect of the nation of Israel and his chariots out of Babylon the Great so they don't get caught up in the coming destruction and the two-thirds of his people will be destroyed here with the heathen all of the two-thirds of the nation of israel will be destroyed all right and the heathen a, a large number of the heathen will be destroyed and those that don't get destroyed they'll be left alive to repopulate and they're going ahead first into captivity starting first with esau edom the edomites the self-proclaimed so-called white men the so-called white men, which are actually the red Hebrew Edomites and the old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks like it speaks of. The physical incarnation of the spiritual demon Satan. All right. Verse six, wherein ye uh, greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Whom having not seen ye love, and in whom though ye now Slaki, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with un with, Slaki, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Right? This is what's keeping us going. This is what's keeping the true biblical Hebrew Israelites going, despite the fact that Babylon the Great is through, despite the fact that Ren is through the roof. I uh Biden and ruined this place even further. Thwadi Halbashmi Al Shah. All right, women are out of order, women are bugging out, dudes are bugging out. All of this is keeping the true men of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah straight. And this is how you know that this is not a black thing, like the blood elder Malcolm constantly says. This is about nationality. The spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the living power. Let me get that precept real quick. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. And it reads, The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High Yahweh, and joint heirs with Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right, because when Yahweh Shah comes back, he's going to make us just like him with a perfect immortal body with spiritual power. All right. So, yeah, we got to suffer right now until we get that eternal power. And we're immortal and we have dominion over the creation under our big brother, Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. And this is all part of the Heavenly Father's promise. This is why this is not a black thing. All right. We have Israelites that will come back looking like all nations. And the blood of the Apostle Peter, he only named a few nations right here in the beginning of his epistle. So you have Israelites that came back at that time that were born in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And I think Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Bithynia, they were... Um, uh, Salaki. I think Pontus was in Egypt, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, uh, any brother can correct me in the comment section. Galatia, Cappadocia, and Bithynia had to have been Greek speaking nations. Um, and Asia, you know, it's more so referring to, I believe, uh, that Western Asian region that, um, even the land of Israel is situated upon. Which, you know, if you get it in the Wikipedia, they call it Anatolia. Okay. But, um, what the hell is this? Salaki. Um, but yeah, that's the point right here, man. You know, I just wanted to make this a quick epistle. All right. Uh, the Apostle Peter, you know, <laughs> in his letter right there, right off the bat, it just dismantles a large pillar of the Christian doctrine, which is this thing of, oh, the Lord died. For no, he didn't. He died for the nation of Israel, the elected nation of Israel, uh, starting off with them. OK. And wherever the elect may have been scattered, it wasn't just the elect of the nation of Israel in Jerusalem, but all wherever they may have been. All right. All the nation of Israel is ultimately covered under the Lord's blood. It's just the two thirds on this side. They're covered in the worst way. All right. Because two thirds of our people did sell our Lord. You know, they did say about our Lord that they wanted him dead and that his blood be upon them. And the Lord, he, he's taking them up on that. OK, but that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully that's what's edifying. It's like hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, 
our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders in the sense, the Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bareness, sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, life foreigners scattered among the heathen, that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and the Baba Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah. And we got next, Adawan Ratazah. And one last precept for the road. One of my favorites to prove the scattering. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 8. And it reads, Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Masha, saying, If ye transgress, talking about the Israelites, and this is the Old Testament, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence. And will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. Right. And that strong hand, specifically the right hand of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh Shai. Through Yahweh Shai's blood, we're all redeemed back into the Heavenly Father. Because first covenant standards, we all be through. All right. But that's all I have right there for that. Shema, Yasha'Allah, Yahweh, Allah, Yahweh, Achad. Shalom.